The advice and opinions expressed by the hosts of Autism Live and her guests are meant solely as suggestion and should not be in any way construed as child-specific advice. The Center for Autism and Related Disorders advises working with a board-certified behavior analyst who has experience with autism before starting any intensive behavioral intervention. Any choices you make in determining your child's treatment are completely at your own discretion. and welcome to Autism Live. I'm Shannon Penrod. We're coming to you live in many different places this morning. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. Uh, I'm so thrilled to be here with you live on this Thursday morning in the end of January to the show. You know, our entire show is meant to be interactive and our fabulous producer Traven is constantly finding new ways to be on different platforms. Usually we are live on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Periscope, and you can interact with us on those platforms. This morning we're trying something out and we are live in more places, more places than I can keep track of. So good morning. If you are on a platform and watching us live, all you have to do is write in on that platform. It shows up magically here on my screen. If you have questions, concerns, comments, I'm saying good morning to Nasser and to Gabby. So thrilled that you're here with us this morning. Uh, and uh, we've got a great uh, guest for you today and a great topic for you today. I'm going to talk about that in just a little while. If you are feeling overwhelmed because there's so many things, you're, you're doing treatment either for yourself or for uh, a person that you love and care about, and it's like so overwhelming, you're like, I don't know how to keep track of all of it, and I feel like I'm missing things and missing out on opportunities, whoo, we got the show for you today. Because I, I, I've got a solution for you. So uh, we're going to have a wonderful guest to talk about that in just a little while. But uh, we want to start by reminding you that while we're live on all these platforms um, today and many more today than we've ever been before, and you can interact there, if you want to watch the show later, because this is not a good time for you, then this show podcasts to a, just about any place where you can get podcasts and we're a free download. So I want to encourage you to check out where you get your podcasts, see where we are, and subscribe um, so that you can hear more about everything that we're doing here. Also want to encourage you to go to our website, which is autism-live.com, and scroll through our library. We've been doing the show for almost 10 years now, and we have some video library itch, you know what I'm saying? And you can search by topic, you can search by word, um, you can search by guest. And so all of those things are really wonderful. Um, I encourage you to check it out and then ask questions. And if you're watching the show in the podcast version and you're like, Hey, I want to get in on this. I want to ask a question and I can't come to the live show. All you have to do is put your question in the chat on our website. I check those and typically when we have experts on, we, we go through those and answer those questions. I would definitely tune in to ask Dr. Doreen to see if your question is one of the ones that's been answered. We are not able at this time to answer every single question that comes in. Um, you know, it's the double-edged sort of, we love that more people are watching, but we have a limited ability. But I will tell you that if you're persistent and ask your question, and then ask it again. I really, I noticed that and I put those right up at the top. I bumped them to the top of the ladder. We really want to be of, um, of help and support to you because our mission here is to provide information and inspiration. That's our whole mission. You know, <laughs> that's what we're about here. It's super important to me because I came into the autism community when my son was diagnosed at two and a half and I had a lot to catch up and learn. And I, I said, I just, I wish there was someplace I could go in the middle of the night and ask a question or see an answer and not have to, you know, go to the library, go to a university, go to a conference. I can't do that. I'm here with my kiddo. So uh, Autism Live has been around for a long time now, like I said, almost 10 years. And we really try here to service the larger autism community. That means starting with individuals who are on the spectrum 
They are the beating heart of our community. They're our why, right? So of course we honor and try to give them a voice and try to prevent uh, our, you know, anything that is negative, but to give them the opportunity for that information and inspiration. But we also include in that community everyone who loves those individuals. We want to help the caregivers. We want to help, you know, parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, teachers, uh, service providers, anyone who loves an individual on the autism spectrum and wants to help them to be able to have the resources, the dignity, the respect, the employment, the right to love who they love, the right to good me medical care, um, all of those things. We wanna help that entire community get to those things because we know if we hold hands, si se puede, right? We can do it. So that's what we're about here. And uh, we try to be in as inclusive as we can possibly be there are lots of opinions and I, I'm segueing into my next topic that we're going to talk about. Everybody's got a viewpoint. Everybody's got an opinion. We really want to be Switzerland here. Um, so I'm going to wade into something because I feel like this is information. I got up to date information about this uh, actually this morning. And I know that everybody has feelings about it, but um, I, I, many of you have been asking about the vaccines for COVID. And, and where we are with that. And I just wanna let you know, my up-to-date information tells us that at this time, we, you know, we just have the two vaccines. We've got a couple that are in the works that we're hearing good things about, but we you know, need to know more about them. But right now we have the Pfizer and the Moderna. And at this moment in time, because I know there was a question about this the other day, um, they have not been approved to be used for children. And I think, you know, there's lots of discussions about, you know, will all school children have to have vaccines, you know, and I think that's the cart a little bit before the horse, because at this moment in time, there is no vaccine that the FDA has said is safe for children. Uh, right now, the Moderna, um, well, let's start with the Pfizer. The Pfizer, they have said that they can give it to 16 and 17 years of old, uh, 16 and 17 years of age. But Moderna, you have to be over the age of 18 to right now on this date to receive those vaccines. Um, the other controversy that is brewing right now that I want to make sure that you guys know here in the state of California, every state has their rollout plan of phase one. You know, phase, we, here in California, we have phase 1A, 1B and 1C about who gets the vaccine and when. And there is a group here in California that is asking for people to write to Governor Newsom and ask for people who have um, the, and actually the wording of it is people 16 to 49 years of age who have an underlying health condition or disability, which increases their risk of severe COVID. Right now, those people are in phase 1C. And this group is lobbying Governor Newsom and asking for that group to be moved into phase 1B. Now, I want to reiterate that they want them to have the choice to have it earlier. And this group, um, I, I believe it's Family First, um, is asking for if you are a resident in the state of California and you believe that adults on the autism spectrum should have the right to have vaccines in an earlier phase, because they are at greater risk, then we want to encourage you to write directly to Governor Newsom. I've sent um, a link to Traven if he wants to share it that tells you more about the Pfizer vaccine. More, There's another link for the Moderna and another for the California vaccine plan. And I encourage you, if you are not in the state of California, which many of you are not, um, to check out what the vaccine plan is in your state to look at when you have the choice to vaccine. So uh, use the vaccinate. Um, but in this moment in time, just to reiterate, there is no vaccine that has FDA approval for children under the age of 16. And there is only one vaccine that has approval for ages 16 and 17. Both vaccines have been approved for use um, over the age of 18. So just giving you guys that update. Okay. A uh, little information there. 
because uh, you asked. But uh, right now, we, I, I just want to remind you that we are going to have some experts here on the show. And that's very exciting. We always try to bring you experts that you can ask them questions. But I do want to remind you, as always, that I'm not one of those experts. As I mentioned before, I'm a very proud mom um, of an individual who was diagnosed with autism. And I've been hosting shows about autism in a journalistic viewpoint for well over a decade. But that doesn't make me an expert. It makes me be someone who has a boisterous, informed opinion, but that is not an expert. And we'd like to make sure that you know that. So uh, keep that in mind. <laughs> and if you want me to answer a question for you, though, I'm happy to. But that's why we really bring the experts, so that you can ask them questions. OK, we like to start Thursday mornings with something we fondly refer to as the jargon of the day. This is when we take on one word, one phrase, one acronym. We try to figure out what in the hey, nani, nani are the experts talking about? What does it mean? How is it going to help me to save time and money and get to more progress? Because for my, you know, from my opinion, if it's not saving us time and money and energy and getting us to more progress, why do we need to learn these jargon terms, right? We give you first the actual term, then when I remember, uh, well, first of all, I like to make fun of the actual term, but when I remember, then we give you a working definition and we try to give you an example. So it's something that you begin to have an understanding of. Be patient with yourself. I don't think anybody learns all of these terms overnight. It's why we go over them. Because you know what the experts say, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. So that's what we're doing with the jargon. Today's term, which Traven will reveal for us, bum, ba -da -bum, it's blank. There it is. Oh, it's one of my favorites. Uh, so today's term is generalization. Now, you might have just gone, favorites? What, like, why would generalization be a favorite of hers? Because generalization sounds like, well, I'm making a generalization, meaning I just like smeared it and it's, you know, it's just, like not specific is what I always thought of generalization as. But when we're talking about generalization in terms of learning and teaching a person who's um, you know, on the autism spectrum, in fact, teaching anyone, generalization means a little bit different uh, and it's exciting. Okay, so let's take a look at our actual definition of generalization. What do the experts say that this is? The occurrence of relevant behavior under different non-training conditions, for example, across subjects, settings, people, behaviors, and or time without the scheduling of the same events in those conditions. What? <laughs> I know what generalization is, but what in the hey, Nani Nani, does that even mean? I love how they just like take something that that isn't that complicated and put in words so that we all sound highbrow and that we're drinking our tea with our finger up. Nah, right? Okay, let's take a look at what our uh, working definition is and let's see if we can't get a gripster on this. So generalization, I'm Traven's so busy, he's doing 18 things at one time. Uh, generalization is being able to apply what has been learned in new ways or situations that were never taught. What I like to think of, you know the part in My Fair Lady, if you love musicals, where they're trying to teach her how to speak a certain way and they're teaching her and teaching her and teaching her, but then they get to a moment and Henry Higgins says, by George, I think she's got it. Because she can do it um, in multiple different situations with multiple different people. The skill is really hers. And I always thought about this with my son because I we'd start to teach him something. And you know, in the beginning, it's very painstaking, right? And you go, oh, that doesn't sound like, you know, it's his skill. It sounds like they're, you know, they're teaching something and it's it's not fluent. It's not, it doesn't sound like in reality. Generalization is when you've got the skill to the point where you can apply it in all different kinds of situations, so it's really yours. The example I always give is that when my mother was teaching me how to drive, she didn't want me to just know how to drive on one road. She wanted me to be able to drive on every road that there is in the world and to do it safely. And different roads have different rules, right? Like. You can teach someone how to drive down a country road and there are specific rules, right? And then when you have to teach someone how to be in a roundabout, ooh, a different thing, right? So my mother, really what she was doing was she was planning for generalization when she began to taught me because she didn't just teach me how to drive on this road, 
She taught me rules of the road and how to pay attention to the signs and how to breathe through the stress when something is happening and how to react in an emergency. So this is what we wanna do with everything that we teach, whether we're teaching a person on the autism spectrum, how to use a, a potty, or we're teaching you know, someone who's not on the autism spectrum how to write an essay, right? We wanna be able to teach them not just how to write this, essay, uh, this paper, not just how to pee in this potty at home. We want this individual to be able to use a restroom anywhere in the world, that they can go into any target and the bathroom setup is different, but they know what to do. We want them to be able to write an essay no matter what the prompt is, no matter how many words it needs to be. We're teaching for generalization. Um, and this is when you see a child who is potty trained, but they can only pee in one potty and, they, and the family goes on vacation and the child is having a terrible time because they're, they're nervous and anxious and they can't pee in the potty. Oh, I'm like, oh, somebody didn't plan for generalization. And we want to plan for generalization from the beginning. So we start potty training. And before we do a thing, we go, how are we going to know when he's got it? That's our mastery criteria. We'll do that a different day. But how are we planning for generalization? And the teacher says, okay, well, first we're going to get him peeing in the potty that's downstairs. And as soon as we get that, we're going to move him to the potty upstairs. And then we're going to have him go pee at Aunt Betty's house. And then we're going to do an outing where he pees in Target. And then we're going to go to Walmart and we're going to pee in all these different um, potties. Um, okay, I'm looking at a note. Um, uh, I got to change something. You know, I can't walk, talk, and chew gum at the same time. Uh, okay. Sorry, you guys. Hang on one second. I don't know that I've done it right, Traven. We have a technical difficulty, you guys. Um, I'll have to figure that out in a second. Okay, so generalization, um, really, really important. When we start to teach colors to a child, and you know, maybe we start with blue. Well, there's lots of different shades of blue, and we don't want to just teach one shade of blue, and we don't, and blue can be um, two dimensional and it can be three dimensional, and it can be in a um, in a square or a triangle, or it can be on a pet, you know, there could be a blue dog. So we want to be able to teach blue in all those. And I've changed my name. <laughs> See, Traven, this is like, I am useless to you. Okay. Hang on, you guys. Uh, we'll get this. We will get this. Okay. So generalization is important. I think it's one of the big hallmarks of good quality ABA is that if you're a lot of times parents will say to me, I, how do I know if I have a good ABA provider? And what I want to say to you is there's a lot of different things you can look for, but this is one of them. So you're sitting and you're talking with your provider about something that they're going to teach to you or to your child and ask them, okay, how are we planning for generalization? And if they don't immediately go, great question, this is how we're going to plan for generalization, then I, that's red flag city for me. But if they do say it, that's gold stars. And there's nothing really sort of in between, you know? So if, if you say to them, oh, okay, uh, so you're going to potty train my child, how are we going to, what's our plan for generalization? Uh, and if they go, oh, I'll get back to you on that. No, that's a big, massive fail. Um, because generalization is a hallmark of good teaching in general, but good quality ABA. It's important. Generalization is where we want to get to. And it's different for different skills. When I think about um, when they were teaching my son how to safely cross the road, and I'll tell you something, I didn't think we'd ever get to generalization on that. Like, I didn't think I would ever be like, my child is out in the world and I know that he's crossing streets and I'm okay with it. I thought for sure that would never, never happen. But, you know, they had a plan for generalization and they taught and they taught and they taught and tested, tested, tested in safe environments. And my son goes out into the world and crosses streets. And, and I go, that's amazing. Cause I was a hundred percent sure that could never happen. So that's your generalization, super duper important. One of those really fabulous things. All right, moving on. Cause we're getting late here. We're a little running behind here. Let's go to our question of the day. 
Uh, and you can answer on any of our live platforms. What's your favorite part of the day? What's the part of the day? And it can be three seconds long. It can be 10 minutes long. But what's your favorite part of the day? I love the part of the day. And when we weren't in isolation, um, it was my favorite part of the day, but it's still my favorite part of the day. I love my part of the day when all of our outside things are done and my family is all in one place, all together. And you can tell that it's like such a good moment because even my dogs get it. They, it's like they're all day long, they're like, right? And then there's that moment when we know that you know, mom's not working, dad's not working, and my son is done with his distance learning, and every everything just sort of chills and moves a little bit slower, and the dogs go night night, and they lay down and they sleep as if somebody has shot them because the stress of the day is over. It's palpable. So that's my favorite part of the day. And by the way, that's usually when dinner is being prepared and had. And when I think about it, when we were in early intervention, that was my hardest time of the day. When everything was ending and we had to transition to that slowed down thing, that was my hardest part of the day. Um, we did some things to make it a better part of the day because I found that I, let's not even talk about my son, I couldn't transition from this part of the day where it was go, 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 go to this, now I'm going to prep a dinner, right? Um, and I don't know who it was that said to us, just put on music, do a transition. You don't have a transition. That's why it's bumpy. Do a transition. And they suggested that we put on music for one minute and that the three of us, my husband and my son and I just dance, like dance it out. Like they say on Grey's Anatomy, just dance it out for one minute, shake it off and then, then move on to the next thing. So there's like this transition. Um, and it is my favorite time of the day now. So what's your favorite time of the day? Love to hear that. The other day we asked you, what's your least favorite time of the day? But today we want to know favorite time of the day. And then moving on to our topic of the day, uh, uh, the topic of the week. And we talked about this on Monday. Is your heart open? And what is your heart open to? And if there's something that you think your heart is open to, but it's not, it's not happening and you're frustrated with it, I would ask you to go back and look at it and say, what part of your heart is closed to it? That uh, we talked about this at length on Monday. I, I don't have time to go through it again, but um, this was a pivotal thing for me when I realized, and it you know, came from Oprah. I love me some Oprah. And Oprah was talking to Steve Urban and she said, I've really learned the secret that if my heart is not open to something, it doesn't matter how much I want it, it's not gonna happen. But when my heart is truly fully open to something, it's as if, like everything gets out of the way. And, and I found that to be true in my life. So what is your heart open to? If you find yourself sitting there and saying, there's no help, there's no hope, you know, our brains are these positive assumptive computers and they will reiterate that and they will go, you're right. You're absolutely right. And you can find evidence that there's no help and there's no hope. But the opposite is true too. If you sit there and say, I know I'm going to get some help today. I'm 100% sure that I'm going to get some help today and I'm going to be open to it. I guarantee you, you will notice help shows up. I think a lot of it is what we notice, um, but I want to notice the good things. I've been in the mind space where all I was noticing was what's wrong and that's always available, but I want to be in the headspace where I notice how many people, you know, I say this to you guys all the time, you don't know how many arms you're in right now, how many people are thinking about you, knowing that you're going through challenges, thinking, sitting up at night and thinking, how can I make it easier for them? I work with people who are like that, that they don't even know your name, but they are thinking, how can I help this mom, this dad, this teacher, this provider? How can I support them? And in fact, we've got guests today that are going to be talking about exactly that. So is your heart open to taking some help? Is your heart open to making some progress? And if it's not, and that's okay to say to yourself, okay, what part of it am I, am I not open to? Like, because if you say, well, I really want some help and support, but you know, it costs money, right? Then you're not fully open to it. But if you say to yourself, I'm really open to getting some help and support, and I'm really open to seeing how I can afford it, 
that's a different thing and stuff will show up in your life. In fact, it's one of the things that we're going to talk about with our guests today. So I'm welcoming to the program and I'm, and I need to, this is what we were trying to do before is change, but I, Trayvon, I don't see how to highlight to have it change. I, I can't figure out how to do that. In any case, we'll, we'll figure it out, but we're welcoming to the program, Steve Carter from my Hannah and my Hannah I remember when this was first being introduced to me, I thought that Hannah was probably a little girl who inspired all this. It's not, it's H-A-N-A, -A, which stands for Health Advocate Navigator Assistant. Did I just get your attention? Isn't this something that you've been wanting? So Steve Carter is there. Hello, Steve, how are you? Steve, can you hear me? Steve, are you hearing me? Nick Garofolo's here and I can hear you. Well, Nick, hello. I didn't know. How are you, How are you today? <laughs> I'm good. Uh, and uh, I'm apparently I'm Steve is still backstage. I'm here now. Okay, Steve is there now. Okay, sorry about that, guys. So, Nick, tell me your name again. <clears throat> Nick Garofolo. Okay, and Steve is there. Gentlemen, please tell us what your titles are at my Hannah. Okay. So thank you for having us on. I, I really, really appreciate the opportunity to speak to you and, and your audience and give you a little, you know, background on what HANA is and, and how we started. Um, I'll try and keep it in five minutes. Um, I've had a lifelong debilitating eye disease. In fact, three months ago, I was totally blind. And, and luckily right now I am seeing you uh, and I am seeing my screen. I'm, uh, I'm not 2020, but by all means I can go and, and, and do my work and enjoy myself again. But having a debilitating, multiple debilitating eye conditions over my lifetime, the challenges that it brought to me, um, um, career in Wall Street, poo -poo. Um, my wife and I decided that we would venture on into, you know, a, a, another aspect of our life, our give back time. And we decided some years back that we wanted to help family caregivers with their struggles because we saw firsthand what ours were. So I, I have a sister-in-law who, who had a severely epileptic uh, daughter. And I watched the challenges that she faced on a daily basis. And then there was my ex-sister-in-law, Joanne, who recently passed away at 59 and left uh, her son, Mark, behind, who was on the spectrum and 20 years old. And I looked at the challenges they faced every day. And Diane and I decided that when we looked around at the large amounts of money pumped into the community and we saw still a lot of families, without access to services due to lack of diagnosis or problems that states may have with giving uh, parents services, we decided that that status quo was not acceptable. So onward we went, you know, I, I, I embarked upon this journey with, with some friends and some people from my old career, and, and I've built up a great team now of Steve, Andy, Scott Badish, who was at ASA for years, and we found that the, the core um, wish of, of almost every parent that we spoke to in the community was knowing that they would have an independent future for their child. And with that said, we, we, we took a step back and said, well, how are we going to do it? And every business or solution starts with what's the problem? So the problem is a condition that has multiple comorbidities and that creates multiple challenges for a parent. Those challenges are, and, and I'm sure this is nothing surprising, but there's emotional challenges on a daily basis, financial challenges, and that many parents give up a job to stay home and take care of their child, and it creates a one-income, not two-income home. Educational um, parents sometimes don't have the time, and we found time is a problem, to educate themselves, let alone find what's really, really valuable education for them. Parents go on these encyclopedic, encyclopedic ventures on the internet and come away many, many times 
more confused with less knowledge and that creates lack of confidence in making decisions. So we looked at that as an issue and the communal issue also parents sometimes feel alone. So we looked at those four issues and we said, how are we going to address it? And this is what Hannah does to support parents. Um, a lot of parents who don't have services or some that may not have all the services they want sometimes don't get access to, you know, some certain experts and, and, and thought leaders in the space because maybe their insurance doesn't cover it. They can't afford things, you know, out of pocket. So we've are building what we believe is a world-class team of not just experts. I think parents get tired of hearing the term expert sometime, but also parents and people like Scott and, and Ven Sequenzio, who's on uh, the call here today, who have, you know, lived um, in this space for quite some time and bringing, you know, access to these people through workshops and webinars and curated content really is nothing new. A lot of people do that, but you know, we want to do it on a consistent basis and bring the best people we can forward. But more importantly, um, any business that creates content or knowledge, the most important content comes from the community, community generated content. So we will have a deep interaction with our com community and our members to extract from them. What are the hot button issues? What do they need to know about today? Is it back to school time? in September? Is it coming to Easter? Or is it Christmas? And how do we deal with the challenges that certain times look at COVID? We never expected this. So how to, how to address challenges at certain times of the year, the hot button issue. Um, on top of that, we built a navigation tool. I, I had many, many doctors over the years, and we know one of the biggest challenges of having a child on the spectrum is not just, okay, my son's on the spectrum. There's multiple, you know, comorbidities. And I think many of us know what they are, but sleep disorder, eating disorder, seizure disorder, I could just go on and on and on. And, but more importantly, those stakeholders the clinical and behavioral stakeholders are not the only ones a parent interacts with over the lifetime of the journey. There's people from the financial industry, there could be attorneys, there could be uh, accountants. Um, there's obviously people in the education system, there's teachers and, and therapists in school, and there's family members. So we built a tool called My Navigator, which gives parents the ability to build multiple, not a single, multiple uh, hyper-focused teams that parents can consistently stay connected with and collaborate with. And how do they do that? They do that through taking their vital documents, storing them in a HIPAA compliant document storage solution, which is quite easy to use and sharing vital information through permissible access, giving team members access to the documents themselves. So sharing amongst all the clinical people, important documents, sharing amongst the legal and financial people, important documents. And I saw when my, my sister-in-law Joanne passed away, she left us one thing, two things, a box of papers and a child who didn't have a guardian. So, you know, these are firsthand problems that we've looked at, but the navigation tool also gives you the ability to collect video clips, audio clips, a very, you know, complex, but easy to use calendar to keep track of whether it's a medical appointment, a social event or whatever it may be. But again, it's building an entire team to collaborate together from early intervention to age out. Lastly, we have, rather than giving people articles to use, we found that what was more effective is curriculum and courses, which we've seen from our research that parents will focus more to complete a course than just read an article and people walk away with a lot more confidence and knowledge and they feel a sense of, of victory to say um, when they do complete a course. So we have found that um, courses and curriculum create more confidence in parents. So, and last but not least, we talk you know, a, a little about financial. 
Um, giving people access to things that everybody has, democratization of access, obviously this is a term we hear often today, but we don't see a reason why a parent can have a will, trust, and guardianship. Sometimes the cost of that is five or $6,000. So we've embarked on our journey here and we've been successful in starting to bring on teams of attorneys who will you know, deliver these services at steep discounts, 40% and even 50%, because everybody should be entitled to have all those services. Again, look what happened with my sister-in-law. Um, Social Security, many parents don't know how to fill out their Social Security forms and they go and hire an attorney who charges $1,500, $2,000. Scott's setting up a team where we'll do that service for between $250, $300. And then lastly, IEP parents sometimes can't afford access to a, a, a family consultant to help them better understand IEP. And we'll do that through our curriculum and some workshops and so forth. And then other access to other services that say parents' money, discount cards in pharmacies for, for pharmaceuticals and discounts on other products and services that are new to the market, Florio, which is a sensory goggle, a mode of play, tippy talk, go into these companies and saying, hey, in the real world, you sell a product, you pay a commission to an Amazon or whoever it may be. We don't take commissions for any third party service. Our goal is to reach out to these people and say, hey, you know, we're trying to service a community that's in need here. So what we expect for you to be part of the My Honor solution is you deliver us your product to these parents at the lowest possible price that you can. So those are our four value props. And we believe that um, we address many, many uh, of the problems that, that parents face. So that's kind of a quick overview. And lastly, Hannah was a little Maltese, um, who was my little darling who passed away last year. But mm -hmm. Hannah picked up on my, um, my needs that I couldn't see, trained herself. She knew what was happening. She knew to stop at a corner. She knew to stop at the stairs. And that's where Hannah came in here. Hannah, Hannah guided me and she lives through this and hopefully she guides many of the parents here. What a wonderful story. And I love that this was born out of seeing a need, right? Cause that's the, the mother of all good inventions. So I, and I love that I, cause I, I, I forgive me. I was saying Hannah cause I'm from upstate New York, but uh, Hannah, uh, I love that. And again, I love that it, it actually is named after something, but for those of you just tuning in, it, it also stands for health advocate navigator assistant. And I'm sorry that I have a dog that's barking. I apologize. But I want to get to these other two gentlemen that are here with us. And Steve, let's start with you. Introduce yourself as, and tell us what your title is at MyHana. Well, thank you, Shannon. Uh, Steve Carter, uh, the interim CEO at MyHana. Uh, I've been here for three years now. Uh, I've worked closely with Nick and really watched this product evolve over the years to our offering now, which I think, as Nick said, quite robust, uh, could help a number of families, including individuals that I know with children on the spectrum. And uh, just a, a lot of great aspects of the product. And then I'd, I'd love to introduce uh, Ben Sequenzi as well. Ben? Hi. How you doing? Thank you so much for having us on. Um, yeah, I um, I have a 37-year-old daughter who has autism and epilepsy. Um, I've been an advocate for uh, individuals with disabilities and autism for over 35 years. Uh, I was the president of the Autism Society of Florida for about 18 years. So I've been around it. Uh, as a um, helping families and also being one myself <laughs> and, and knowing what the, what the services are that are out there or not out there. And um, my Hannah came along. Um, I, I got involved in the summer of 2020 um, and a gentleman named Scott Baddish, who was the president of the national had retired and he contacted me. And at first I was a little skeptical, but then I started really looking at what it offered. And I said, boy, I wish I had had this one. You know, my kid was going starting out in the system, and even later with some of the other things that we're going to be implementing, like the financial and the um, um, other things that uh, 
were brought up. So I don't know if you had other questions for me, but that's kind of who I am. <laughs> yeah, well, I just, you know, and I think we, we've given our viewers a lot of information, but I kind of want to boil it just down, distill it down, because I think, as you've all said, this can be very overwhelming because there are so many, it's, it's like there's all these moving parts to getting treatment and helping and supporting anyone who has anything going on. But when we're talking about autism, it, it has so many arms and legs and different moving parts. And I know that a lot of parents are like, just keeping it together and getting to my appointments, keeping track of my appointments. This person needs this piece of paper. That person needs that piece of paper. And I have said for a long time that one of the biggest problems that caregivers have is keeping it all straight. And it's very hard to not drop a ball. And, and so what I love about this is that that's really what I, from looking at, and Scott Baddish introduced me to you guys, and you know, we have to say thank you to Scott. But I, what I look at it and I go, oh, this is a great system for keeping the balls up in the air without having to exhaust someone so that it's all in one place. All, you know, we've been telling people for years, take all of your IEPs and your diagnoses and make a folder on your desktop so that you can send it to people, but then that computer wears out and where is it and why is it? So you guys have created this sort of, what I, tell me if I've got it right, this one where you can have it on, it's on your phone and, and you can, at a, at a click, be sharing this information, having people on your team share it with each other, uh, but it's really controlled by you. It's very customizable from what I can see. Am I in the neighborhood here? Shannon, you are 100% uh, correct. Uh, our proprietary tool, My Navigator, was developed uh, with that just in mind. You know, I look at my friends who, you know, every time they go to a doctor's appointment, they got two banker's boxes full of documents because they don't know what that person needs to see because they've just got, they're over, they've got too much information. And not only that, you know, it's the the need to retain documentation that it also is so tricky because there's forms that you got when the child was, you know, between three and five that you still need, at, you know, further down the line. So having uh, the My Navigator, which is a HIPAA secure document store solution that allows you to share within your care circle, which can be family members, uh, doctors, educators, practitioners, and then also financial. I know Nick touched upon it briefly, but now in this, you know, the world we live in now with, you know, conservatorship being such a big issue, you know, having that navigator be able to track and follow your child on a day-to-day -day basis where say something, God forbid, were to happen to you and a relative or someone else, you know, had to pick up care, you know exactly what that child is doing on a daily basis, you know, bedtimes, you know, food routines, you know, what causes outbursts, you know, you've got the IEPs for the past five years, you know what the teachers are saying, you know who their specialists are, and you know what data shared with them. And being able to keep that in one location, uh, I believe now is essential. And we have the tools to do it now, so we should exploit it. Absolutely. Can I just tell you a brief story that I, you know, a year ago, I was dealing with a parent who has two uh, adult sons on the autism spectrum, and she was having to move because in those horrible wildfires that we had in California, yep. in less than three minutes, that wildfire went through, took her entire house, every document she ever had about those young men and their diagnoses, and it was gone in a second. And she was, and she had to move because she had no house. So she moved and had to restart therapy someplace and it took her a year because the doctor that had diagnosed was had retired she didn't have the paperwork she had to go back to square one and reprove that these young men were on the autism spectrum and it was such an eye-opening experience watching this mom go through this and trying to help her to advocate to get the paperwork back that we started saying on the show it's so essential that you keep your documents and in, in more than one place or in a place that is safe so that alone is, as they say, worth the price of admission. When we're talking about sure. Myhana, but you guys I have so many things. Yeah, I wish I could say that's the first time I've heard a similar story, but it's not. I mean, when you okay. think about the hurricanes uh, that ripped through the South, uh, you, we've actually talked to individuals who lost everything in an hour. Again, back to step one, or in the interim, trying to find you know what medications uh, we need to get, where the prescriptions, doctors, all that is 
essential to be put in something like this. And, uh, you know, it, it again, people are beginning to move again. It's, you know, people are looking for other places to go and being able to take that with you instead of having to go through the basement and look for 15 different boxes where you don't know where anything is. You know, this is all at your fingertips right now. And, you know, I also love that you guys are about hooking parents up with resources. We've seen in COVID that, you know, bless these caregivers' hearts because they had everything in place. They knew who was providing their ABA, their speech, their OT, the, you know, who their pediatrician was. And then suddenly in COVID, this ABA provider was not doing services, but this one was. And it was like the wild, wild west. And it still is. And I feel that as we get back to opening up, it's going to be even more so. And it, the, the word of the day is overwhelmed right? Because it's so easy to get overwhelmed. So I think that this is a great thing that you guys are doing. Let's talk a little bit about how people can connect and the different ways that they can connect. So if they're interested in more information, what's the best place for them to go, you guys? So I would just go to myhana, M-Y, and it's right in my name, myhana.org. Uh, that is uh, our product page, myhana.org. Uh, we've got some overview of the product. We've got some testimonials. Uh, the first thing you're going to see is a quick one-minute video on why we created My Hot uh, and how it can help your family. Um, from there, we do offer a 30-day free trial. We are currently working with the Autism Society of America through their affiliates uh, to provide um, services for their community as well. Um, so uh, I, I encourage you, if you are a, a member of any of the affiliates, to, to reach out to that affiliate head and ask about my Hana. Uh, there's more information there. And then you could also just, uh, we've got a comment box or <laughs> there's ways to contact us through there that I'm more than happy to, to help anyone who's interested in the product. Wonderful. And so for those of you who are listening in podcast, it's my M Y Hana, H A N A dot org, my Hana dot org. Now, if they want to do the Navigator, and I think every everyone needs to at least go and try the Navigator. This is what I'm advocating for today is that I think for some of you, this is exactly what you've been asking us. Like, how can I keep, it's the number one question I get from families is how do I survive this? How do I keep it all straight? How do I do that? They've created a tool for you, the Navigator. And, you know, you can do a 30 day free trial. I think that for a lot of you at the end of the 30 day trial, you're going to go, how did I exist without this? I don't want to go back. Um, so I'm encouraging you to go and try it and see, because look, if there's one thing that you can do to ensure that your child gets more of, of the good things that you've worked so hard for them to get and lowers your stress, then that's a worthwhile thing. There's a very affordable, low cost monthly fee that comes after the 30 day. And, and I don't know if you're implying that you have discounts through certain organizations. Is that what you're implying, Steve? Um, no, we, we are working in conjunction with them right now. Um, uh, but, you know, there, there's definitely a possibility in the future. Um, okay. But as of right now, it's $19.99 a month, um, $199 annually. Uh, so you do get a discount if you purchase annually. But with that, you've got access to some of the thought leaders in uh, the autism space. Uh, we do weekly workshops, weekly support groups, uh, and we've got an ever-changing and evolving curriculum, which helps parents from detection through age out. And then also uh, we've got a really interesting approach to explaining how to uh, get services and how to apply for aid which I think is so important right now because a lot of families, you know, you, you get, you, you find out that there's a possibility, there's detection, diagnosis you go through, and there's so many services that people aren't aware of. I mean, even, even Scott, for instance, told stories of stuff and he was running uh, the ASA and wasn't aware of some of the things available. So imagine being able to tap individuals like that who have a wealth of knowledge and are doing curriculum, giving videos on how to fill out forms, how to apply for certain services, um, it, we find it to be uh, an amazing offering. Oh, the forms are the forms will kill you faster than anything else. I think right? it, it thinks yeah. all of our battleship. Right. I love to mix metaphors. Uh, but here's what I want to say to people, because I was thinking about this this morning. I know that a lot of you are like, like oh, twenty dollars a month. I don't have it. I got methyl B12 shots. I've got I've got to pay co-pays. But here's what I want to suggest to you is that you get 30 days free trial and 
You're going to see at the end of 30 days, but my guess is that having this is going to save you way more than $20 a month because there is nothing more heart wrenching than seeing a parent, a uh, caregiver, relative who works hard to put a bunch of things in place. Like you can work so hard to get the IEP in place, but then if you can't find it to give it to the person who's who's got to implement it, it doesn't matter that it's on a piece of paper. If you've worked hard to get ABA services in place, but then you miss one ABA appointment because the schedule was confusing, that costs you way more than $20 way more than $20. So my challenge to everybody that I want to encourage people, go do the 30 day trial and then ask yourself reasonably at the end of 30 days, do you think that this saved you $20 worth of heartache, stress, services, and just dropped balls? And I'm guessing you're going to find that the answer is going to be yes, and you're going to be happy and, and hang on to it. And then utilize all the other things that it offers. So that's that's my suggestion. What do you guys think about that? Shannon, I, I love the uh, the suggestion. I would encourage people to definitely go check it out. Um, it's 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 a great product. It's taken uh, a number of years to uh, construct and and get to where it is, and it continues to evolve from now. So the product you see now is not going to be the same product in six months. We'll continue to improve. You know, my goal would be to build out some sort of TurboTax X kind of for filling out these forms where you fill out your profile, it pulls the information and then go back. But that's, hey, it's all in development. We're hoping to get there. But right now we do have an amazing offering, uh, the workshops, support groups, the curriculum, and then again, the My Navigator, which which is a amazing piece of software in itself. Honestly, the forms, I just, it was a day before yesterday, I sat down with a mom because she, her son was getting ready to start services, but there was one document that she could not get filled out. And it was the thing that was preventing her child from getting services. So I said, I'm going to sit with you and we're going to go through it together. And we're not going to stop until we get it done. And, and, you know, it, it took a while. Those, th those forms are overwhelming. And I was talking with somebody else about it. And once again, I was saying, you know, if, if we could figure out a code in insurance that we could code for being able to fill out paperwork, so many more people would have services. That's because I think, I think there's a lot of us in the community. Like I see a, a stack of papers that I have to fill out and I, uh, I want to run for the hills. I, right. When my, my son uh, applied for um, Medi-Cal and, and it took like a team of people, we filled out the paperwork, got it in. And I was like, okay, he has Medi-Cal. When a year later, when the packet arrived, that was like, you got to refill it out every year. That thing never got filled out. And my son never had Medi-Cal again. Yeah. Me, you know, and I, and, and, you know, I'm supposed to be somebody who knows a little bit more than the average bear. I couldn't do it. And I see you shaking your head, Ben. I, I, I'm imagining yeah, I, um, the same for you. Well, yes. And, and one of the things I wanted to chime in about is when you are sitting in a situation and your child's either just diagnosed or even after later down the road, the services from wherever you're trying to get them from take time to get implemented. You have it like if it's, if it's a newly diagnosed child, it can take three to six months before they're even evaluated to get into early steps in some of these other programs. So the one thing I like about uh, my Hana is that if a family finds out and they, they, they get to us, they can start looking at some of the things that they could be doing for their child. They can start to get in that mode of knowing and understanding and also doing some of the, you know, we have goals and curriculum and they can start with whatever issue is going on with behavioral or body training or whatever. Um, and they can, they can get a jump start on families that, that don't have it. Um, and while they're waiting for that to, you know, to become off or get off the waiting list, so to speak, because even after they get the services, when they go through different age levels and transitions, you know that you end up losing services or you get different services. I Man, I can't tell you how many times I've advocated for families with IEPs that, you know, they were in elementary school and they're getting speech therapy five times a day or five times a week and they're getting OT three times a week and they move to middle school. And now the middle school says, well, we only do speech therapy once every other week. And we only do OT once a month, you know. And so now the services that they were getting at school are dwindling. Families don't know necessarily how to traverse that to keep their services. So we can help with that because we're going to have education on IEPs and things like that. We're building that whole back end that's not even in there yet. Um, and then beyond that, 
if they're doing if they have to go to private services they can have their information that they've accumulated themselves and have it on hand like you said and be able to give it to that private therapist the other thing that was always an issue was we had private therapy when my daughter was younger and the therapist at school is telling us the opposite of what she's the private therapist is doing and you never could get the two in a room because the school system doesn't want any private therapies and therapists in the meeting you could bring them but they didn't want they basically poo-pooed it well now you could actually get the two talking to each other that are actually or communicating with each other same thing with a teacher how many times you hear the family uh has a situation happening at home and the teacher doesn't ever see it so they can you know you can share that information so that whole part of it beyond the my navigator which to me of all the things out there that's the biggest differentiator between it and any other thing i've seen out there being able to go in one place have all your care team together be able to share that information like you said the document being able to store everything on the cloud and not have to worry about it being lost or where, where's that box or where's that piece of paper hell i just had a situation my daughter's still on my insurance because she was i'm with the company for a lot of years she's over 26 well you know what happens they want to stop you from having coverage and i had to go through just last week sending information to the new insurance company because they don't want to cover her who's been covered her whole life you know and you go through that. So having that ability to go grab that documentation, having it in, at, at hand instead of looking through a box in the garage that's 20 years old, you know. Exactly. And I'll tell you something, you know, I think we don't think about that when when our kids are newly diagnosed, we're, we're, we're in the moment we're in now, and that's overwhelming. But our kids, and it's a wonderful evolution, they get older. Uh, and we're thrilled about it. That's a good thing. But these things do come back up. And we do need to have them stored in a way that it's not in the garage and that it's not just on the computer that nobody knows where that computer went anymore. So right. I think this is an amazing endeavor, you guys. And I'm so grateful that you guys had the opportunity to be here and, and share this with our audience. And um, Nick, I especially love that this was born out of seeing the need to support caregivers out of because of what you went through. Um, I, I think that makes it you know, all the more uh, beautiful what you're doing because it, it sprung from seeing a need and filling a need. And we love that here. So again, the website to go to is myhana.org. That's myhana.org. We encourage you to go there. I encourage you to do the 30 day free trial and see, I think you're gonna find that this is gonna be something that's gonna help you and help you to get to more services. It's essentially, you know, a lot of you are paying copay. That's that's uh, what this is monthly. And you're paying it per visit. Um, I think that this is a worthwhile endeavor. And I, I'm confident that if you try it for 30 days, you're going to want to keep it going. Gentlemen, thank you for all of your hard work and for being with us today. We're deeply appreciative of all the hard work that you guys have done. And we're thank thankful you. Thank you. Badish for bringing us all together. Um, and that man's supposed to be retired. <laughs> but I, you know, I, could, I knew that he would never be able to retire, retire. Some people just aren't capable of doing that. And I think Scott's one of them, but nice to see the good work that he's doing while he's not retired. <laughs> Thank you very much, Shannon. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you. So Thank you. Thank Have a great week. Bye you guys. You take care. We Thank you. We are uh, about 30 seconds here from the end of the show. And I want to take just a second to thank all of you who joined us on new platforms today because we were live on more places than we've ever been before. I think it was interesting. We had some technical difficulties, but we'll forge on ahead. I do want to give you a programming note that our programming for tomorrow and Monday is going to be pre-recorded. I like to be honest with you guys about that. Um, so, uh, but we will be back here. And then on Tuesday of next week, we have a pre-recorded Temple Grandin as well. So we're back on Wednesday live and I will miss all of you, but have some family things that we got to take care of here. So, uh, I want to encourage you to keep checking the website. We will be monitoring the, the live feature. You can write in questions if you have them there. Uh, we've got some amazing guests that are coming up in the month of February. I will see you then. Until then, give your kiddos a hug from me and one for you too. Bye-bye for now.
Thanks for watching Autism Live. If you found anything helpful in this video, please give us a like. In fact, make sure that you smash that subscribe button on YouTube and give us a like on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Instagram for important updates. And please download our free podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you so much. See you next time.